again and welcome to Force Talk, a Star Wars podcast. This is episode one. The last one was episode zero. Um, some of you even said that in the uh, comments. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Star Wars Fan Fun Day slash weekend that uh, we were all at Sunday and Monday just gone. Uh, we got some interviews there as well. So there's some of that to be sharing with you. Also, we're going to be doing a section on Legends in Canon about Mara Jade. And Sarah's uh, picked that bit out for us. And we're going to cover a little bit of Star Wars news. It's a bit light, obviously, after Celebration. Right, so we're going to talk about Star Wars Fan Fun Day. So, Mike, do you want to start off and tell us what some of your highlights of uh, yep. our weekend in Burnley was? Yep, well, I was there on the Sunday and the Monday. Um, it was a great weekend, lots of guests there. Um, for me, I was um, really pleased to meet Taylor Gray for the first time, the uh, young guy who does the voice of Ezra Bridger in Rebels. So it's nice to see him at a UK convention. I believe it was his first. So we got an interview with Taylor that we'll share with you. Um, great to see David Prowse again. You know, it's good that he's still coming to these conventions and uh, meeting with everyone. And then there's a whole host of People played various um, X-Wing pilots and aliens from the different films. Um, we met with uh, Femi Taylor, who played Ula, the dancing girl in Return of the Jedi in Jabba's Palace. And uh, Gerald Holm, a uh, really nice guy, true gentleman, so we've had a good chat with him. And he played uh, Tessek, the squid head character, and also a Mon Calamari officer in uh, Return of the Jedi. So it's great seeing all the, all the guests there, and obviously all the um, cosplayers and all the kids having fun, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and of course we were sat with uh, Gerald and uh, Femi Taylor at the dinner with the yeah, stars. Yeah. So on the uh, on the Sunday night after the first day of the convention, they have a dinner with the stars event to raise money for charity. And uh, Blues Harvest, who we I don't think we mentioned in the last episode, but we was planning to. Uh, they're, they're a great band who do sort of uh, blues and soul. Uh, tunes with a Star Wars twist, so songs that you know but with uh, Star Wars lyrics, one being something like uh, Shake Your Green Lightsaber instead of uh, Shake Your Money Maker, stuff like that. But they did a great rendition of uh, Derek and the Domino's Layla, but mm -hmm. called it Leia as a tribute to Kerry Fisher, yeah. so that was uh, that was a big highlight from the dinner. So Sarah, what about yourself? Because you were um, dressed very and well, I thought, for the <laughs> event. <laughs> and Solo. Yeah. Uh, there are a few pictures on our page. Uh, I love the event, met Ingrid Delia, who filled in for Carrie Fisher in Rogue One. Uh, you probably won't recognise her as her face were covering dots. Uh, <laughs> lovely girl. Um, she should release a couple of little naughty snippets, but you'll find that on the interview. Um, plenty of kids dressed up, plenty of cosplayers, which I love. And apart from that, just ace. <laughs> Nick? Yeah, most good. I was stuck behind a camera for most of it, so, <laughs> so, so I didn't. Uh, the best I, I didn't get the full experience like you guys did. You got for your full two days, and you did for dinner with stars. I, I only was there for like a little bit, but I loved what I what I got for ten pounds. You can't really complain at like that level of festival. It's yeah. like really, really cool what you can get for ten pounds. Like you, you got all the stars, all the merchandise there. You've got all the people in cosplay. Of little, little like wampers and stuff like that. Really good photo opportunities. So I had a great time, even though I didn't get to interview anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, we decided really we, about. we decided it would probably be a good idea to keep Nick as as far away from the celebrities as possible. From people. <laughs> from people. <laughs> I do have several criminal records. Because <laughs> you never know. Uh, yeah. What's Where I've been. <laughs> 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 but uh, we'd like to say as well congratulations to Neil and his team uh, for putting on a fantastic show and uh, we're looking forward to it very much next year up next this is Legend to Canon and we're talking about Mara J this week is there still a chance that Mara J could be included in the cinematic universe for those who have no idea who I'm talking about Mara Jade or better known as Luke Skywalker's wife. She was first introduced to us as second-in-command to Talon Card, an infamous smuggler in Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire. The book briefly touches on her past as an Emperor's Hand, a special agent of sorts for Emperor Palpatine, which is akin to an Inquisitor in the new canon. Basically, four sensitives converted to the dark side, but not powerful enough to pose significant threat to either Vader or the Emperor. 
In the heir to the empire, she meets Luke Skywalker, whom she had been sworn to kill in honour of her former master. This being reinforced by her telepathic connection with him. Luke sought to help her break that binding order, regardless of the great threat she posed. Later on in the Thrawn trilogy, she turns again to the Empire, which also helps silence his command. The two continue to have various adventures together until eventually, Luke proposes marriage in Michael A. Stackpole's union. Due to her affinity to the Force, Luke helped train her and make her a member of his new Jedi Council, and eventually a Jedi Master. From this, the two went on to have a child together, Ben Skywalker. In the Legacy of the Force series, she grows suspicious of her nephew Jason Solo, son of Han and Leia Solo. After him relaying several dubious missions, she learns that he has turned to the dark side and become a Sith apprentice. Vowing to kill him, he unfortunately gets to her first in Karen Travis's novel Sacrifice, later to return as a Force ghost to Luke and her son, and even in the Legacy comics, Cade Skywalker. Over the years, she has been chosen as Imagine Game Network's 19th top Star Wars character, and even their top 10th Star Wars hero. Also appearing in games such as Star Wars Masters of Terracassi, The Force Unleashed, and Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith. And she was even the first character from the extended universe to have her own Hasbro figure. With The Force Awakens ending on Luke being seemingly alone on Act 2, really doesn't leave me with much hope that he's married with a kid. Is it possible? Is she dead? Had she never existed? What do you guys think? So go on, what do you think, guys? Nick? Um, well, I've always liked the character of Mara Jade. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I know an awful lot about her, but I used to play for game Mysteries of the Sith, so I have a bit of an understanding. And I really want Cal Katan to be into canon still, so if Mara Jade can help that, then great. But if not, I, I feel there's still that rumour of Ray being Luke's kid, so if that is the case, we need to discuss who's for mum. Because nobody really wants to see uh, another. It was a magic child made of mini chlorians. <laughs> <laughs> That's been tried and tested. Everybody hated it, so let's not do that one again. <laughs> Chosen one angles are just ugh. well to me anyway. I don't. I don't know about you guys. So you you're done with the Christ parables in Star Wars? That's yeah. It? Oh. I think I think it's just overdone in culture in general. Fair enough. You just been schooled. The Matrix did it as well. Yeah. Mm, not not cool. <laughs> like the first one was great, but when it started getting into like, he's the chosen one, yeah. it's just like dips in the middle. I, I bet said about the end of it. He's definitely not gonna die then, and it just takes all the tension out. So agreed. Bit like those droids that you can cut down like butter. <laughs> <laughs> butter. Butter. How about you, Michael? Um. Yeah, I've, I've read Heir to the Empire when it first came out, which is like years ago. So I, I would have been one. <laughs> it was in the 90s, folks. In the 90s. He's so, so old, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this vague memory of, of Mara Jade. Um, the only thing with Mara Jade, I always thought she was a bit of everything, wasn't she a smuggler? Smuggler, and entertainer, trader. Jedi, um, Sith. Assassin. Uh, Emperor's Hand. So I kind of never quite... Got her, you know what I mean? I never quite knew what yeah. she was. So I think if they are ever going to bring her back in, Needs they to... might just pick one part. I wouldn't be surprised if she pops up in, you know, the Han Solo spin off. She might come in as a smuggler and she might be called Mara Jade, mm. possibly. Mm. Or she might come in, like I say, she could be Luke's wife. But I think they'd need to, if it is going to be Mara Jade, that character. It's going to have to be a distinct role, isn't it? It's going to have to be Luke's mm. wife or something. Whereas I think they've already cherry picked bits of the character already. Um, there's little bits of Ray, little bits of Ray, a bit like Mara. I think even little bits of uh, Jin in Rogue One. Maybe you know, there's a smuggler. Yeah, they, well, not a smuggler, but the the badass. Yeah, well, like, like you said, feel, because, so. because it is such a diverse character, like. She's going to be a little bit of everything, yeah, isn't she? Yeah. So, so maybe not, maybe they do need to like whittle it down to just her core. Yeah, so I'm not convinced she'll come she'll come back into canon as she was in Legends, but I can imagine she might a character called Mara Jade might pop up. It makes mm. sense if she's Luke's wife, but then it's a whole backstory that they're going to have to. Kylo could kill her. Mara Jade cartoon or something <laughs> that fill us in. Did you say uh, something about uh, coming into like one of the anthology films? Do you think Amelia Clark's character in the Han Solo film could be like mm -hmm. Mara Jade's smuggler buddy of Han Solo? Yeah. And she's keeping the false stuff on the down low. Could 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's when she comes in as well because in Legends it was the post Jedi era, so obviously if they bring her in Han Solo. Um, she's in the pre A New Hope era, but they've done that with Thrawn. They brought him in Rebels, whereas yeah. originally he was in post Jedi. So yeah. they, it, you don't know they're gonna they're gonna spring it on us at some point. I'd imagine. I should have didn't she have a purple lightsaber as well? She did. She did. And flaming red hair. Right. So Mace Windu wasn't Mace the first. <laughs> no. He was just well into his <laughs> well into prince. his expanded universe <laughs> and prince. <laughs> I think that's what he's down to. I that's where she got it from. Maybe it was Mace's lightsaber. <gasps> dun, dun, Probably dun. not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was I was I was thinking about this and I mean, you could potentially build a standalone film around her um, to oh, give right. to give her the amount of stage that I imagine there's a lot of a lot of fans wants because she's such a uh, um, a popular character, but obviously there's problems with that because you know we're at a point now where obviously Hamill's reached the appropriate age for where we are in terms of the saga now, so if they were going to go back and do that, it's still possible because I'm sure they could bring Hamill in, do his his digital capture stuff and de-age him and all that kind of stuff but you know do we want a full film of that so maybe it's probably better to I mean I doubt very much whether we'll get a, a flashback in of her in The Last Jedi but I could be wrong I could be wrong about that but could we get a force ghost of her that, that Luke communes with so you think she's dead yeah I think if Luke's got a wife she's not there now, is she? Mm. Not in Force Awakens. Never know, he might have buried her on the island. Yeah. Maybe. Could be. We were saying he could have could have gone a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it is possible that he left everything behind, including his wife, because it was, because, you know, and maybe he realised after everything went to pot that, you know, it wasn't the Jedi path and he had to be on his own. She might have been the, the burning temple in the trailer. Mm. Yeah, she could have been in there. Could've you been never there. know. So, I mean, the, the, the possibilities are there. I, I think they could do a standalone if they wanted, and, and it wouldn't have to be animated. But I think one of the maybe issues, flashbacks is the best way to go. I think one of the issues with having a standalone, though, is, is is that character going to be a big enough draw to the general populace? Mm. Like, so far, we've seen them not really take any major risks with standalones. It's all well known characters and well known story threads. So, to go mm. into something that. Like, a lot of Star Wars fans do know it, but even still, like, you've got the whole Star Wars community, and then you've got the people who've read the Expanded Universe, so that's like a small, small bit of a much larger community, which is still a cult following yeah. overall. So, First step is that going to... World. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe she'd work better as, like, a, a character in more stories, but... Hmm. Mm. Sh- shame that of uh, getting rid of Rebels... Mm, on this season because maybe she'd be good in that what about you Sarah what do you think I think she is dead but I like a bit of a flashback to her Mm. yeah I like to see her brought back in some way Mm. yeah but you sound you do sound pretty good about the fact that she I'm was upset. dead. You, you so said, what, she's not actually dead. Like we, 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 <laughs> no, you, we're just you talking guys about. You condemned her. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> have to be dead, Kathleen Kennedy. If you watch, yeah. <laughs> like, please don't kill her. Please, yeah. like br- bring her in. We, I, I wouldn't mind seeing her. In w- in what way would you like to see her introduced into the into the Skywalker saga, for example? If if she was going to be included in the next film, what would you? I How think the only like way to, to introduce her would be that she's dead. Uh, he's on the island because he's buried her there. Uh, Kylo's murdered her. Mm-hmm. And the way to... Sorry. Uh, when Ray's force sensitivity awakened, he got the sign, so he went to the island, and the best place to meet her would be above her mother's grave. Mm. Right. Dark. <laughs> no, it's pretty dark, yeah. yeah. I, think it, I think if she turns up in a Han Solo, it'd be a good way to bring her in. Yeah. That's the smuggler side. That's smuggler, maybe on that side. Possibly. Possibly. Mm. Very good. Maybe Let get it. captured by the Empire. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Let us know what you think. <laughs> we just uh, we just audition into like be script writers for the films. <laughs> I'll play Mara. If you like any of these ideas that we're tossing out, just get in touch. We're easy to find. <laughs> Now, 
Okay, this section is called Chosen Ones, and what we're going to do is pick one of the main characters from either the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, the sequel trilogy, or one of the spin-off films. I'm going to pose a few questions to the panel and to you guys at home as well. So, for the very first Chosen Ones, we are dealing with Mr. FN2187 himself. Yes, Finn, as we all know him. Uh, you all know Finn, you've seen him in Force Awakens. Give you a brief background, he was taken from his family by the evil First Order when he was a little boy and he was brought up and trained by Captain Phasma along with a load of other stormtroopers obviously including FN2199 known as Nines and FN2003 who had the nickname Slips I do believe. And, did he wear um, slippers? He did. Just like <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and basically from um, a bit of backstory of Finn when they used to go on training missions Slips would get into a bit of bother, he'd fall behind, things would happen to him. And Man. Finn would always um, go back and rescue Slips, and Captain Phasma used to take Finn to one side and say, you're one of the best troopers we've got, but we're only as good as the weakest link in the team, and you need to stop going back and rescuing Slips. So eventually they were sent on the mission to um, Jakku to try and retrieve the um, memory stick from Law Santeca, and Slips was the stormtrooper who got shot. And that's when Finn ran over... And uh, Slips rubs his hand over the helmet and he gets the blood on the helmet. Oh. So Finn was devastated that he'd lost his friend that he'd rescued on so many other occasions, which is what um, affected him deeply enough to defect from the First Order. And then, of course, we all know the story from there. We met Poe, we got the name Finn. And when he ended up at Maz Kanata's castle, it was Nines, was the stormtrooper with the baton, who attacked Finn and called him a traitor because obviously they'd trained together all those years. So I've got four questions for the panel and for you guys. Right, the first one. At the end of Force Awakens, Finn was uh, brutally injured by uh, Kylo Ren with his lightsaber. He was sliced up the back and we've had a little hint of, looks like he's lying in a med pod or something like that in the trailer for um, The Last Jedi. So what I want to know is what do you think, how they'll deal with Finn's injuries in The Last Jedi? Is he just going to miraculously recover and be back to his old self, or are they going to give him some cybernetics, or is he going to have bionic powers? Paddy? I think that'd be really cool. Um, but, I mean, we've seen stuff like, um, you know, obviously Luke Skywalker getting, getting the new hand, and the same with Anakin, but we've never had it where that's been a real kind of like a feature or like a skill it was just like a functional thing yeah. to replace and then it's gone so if that by some reason gives um finn like some kind of new powers or new skills i think that'd be really cool mm -hmm. um what may be even cooler is if, if that kind of messes with him a bit as well yeah makes him a bit like darker that'd i think good. that'd yeah. be interesting yeah yeah mm. sarah i'd like to see some more cybernetics yeah especially when it's legs and whether there's other things as well. <laughs> wow. <What? laughs> Everyone was thinking it. Quickly, to Really? I mean, <laughs> I'm in shock. What was the question again? <laughs> Which of Finn's body parts are going to If you're listening, to John Boyega, she's a fan. Anyway, go on. <laughs> um... Sorry, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you think they're going to deal with Finn's with injuries, his injuries in Last yeah. Jedi? Um, well, I've got an angle on this. Cool. Oh. I think... Um, do you know if characters that uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO are based on? In the, I forget the Japanese film. I think oh. it's Seven Samurai. Seven Samurai, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kurosawa. Two, two characters they're based on, which are for, like, for sort of coward characters. And I think, because obviously Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker's dead, obviously... Because they're aging rapidly and they're not going to have the same sort of focus in these new films. I believe Finn is going to become that cowardly sort of character who's always struggling with his sort of oh, right. inner strength and yeah. like if he's going to overcome his fear to be the hero that the resistance will need. So I think we're going to see a continued plot thread along those lines. Yeah, interesting. So there's well, quite a few ways they can go with it. Oh yeah definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, well, next question. Do you think we'll see a showdown between Finn and Captain Phasma in The Last Jedi? Nick. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I hope so. Phasma's been thrown in a trash <laughs> compactor. So she's yeah. she's going to be pretty pissed, yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah. And um, well, she's in. We know she's in eight, don't we? So she's going to be hunting down Finn. Yeah, she's yeah. going to be angry. And apparently, her role is much bigger as well. Right. So, so that's what I've heard. Yeah, good, good Paddy. Um, it would be nice because it. I mean, I did I did enjoy it as 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 a little gag, of you know you got a trash compactor. Yeah, we do. You know, <laughs> I thought I thought that was quite good, but it was kind of, it just felt a little bit like, and that's yeah, her just dealt with it, now. Yeah. So to see her, and particularly in the way that um, Gwendolyn Christie talked about her ahead of the film, you know, the strength of the character and all this stuff. Then mm -hmm. when that kind of happened there, I was like, mm, I was kind of expecting a bit more. Um, yeah. From such a strong character, so it would be good to see her get an arc where she she actually is kicking some ass. So if that involves a showdown with Finn, then I'm all for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sarah, I'm up for it. Um, with his imperial training, he might actually be able to kick some ass because we didn't really see much of it in the Force Awakens. Mm. Good, good. Do you think the uh, cybernetics are going to further make that ass kicking possible, or do you think it's going to be hindrance like Saw Gerrera? Do you think he's going to be augmented or knackered up a bit? Augmented because it didn't affect his twice or at all, did it? I don't know. It's like a pretty horrific mm. spine injury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. It'd just be good if he's a bit more bionic because all the other sort of cybernetic repairs like Saw Gerrera, they're just so lumbering, aren't they? Yeah. Can you imagine mm. if he's like, more like a superhero mm. kind of character because we've not had that before. Mm. Right, next question. Are we going to see a relationship between Finn and another character? And my money... Don't say Bob. Is on Rose, the new um, Kelly Marie Tran character, I believe. They yeah. go off on a little adventure anyway. But uh, Sarah, start with you. I like for it to be Rose because Paul's mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, from Story Celebration, it looked like it was a sure thing. Him and him and Rose being together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. So I, I think I think you I think you're probably right about that. Well, you, you could be right about that because there did seem to be a good uh, like rapport between the actors in general, as if they kind of mm. work together a lot. So that would chemistry. Yeah, chemistry yeah. is what I'm looking for. Yeah, so that would carry some weight. I think um, Kathleen Kennedy is promised as an openly gay character in Star Wars. And I don't think it's going to be Finn because he seems like way too much of a horny teenager. Like he was asking Ray if, he, if she had a girlfriend and Force Awakens. Boyfriend. Know, boyfriend. He, say, he says her. Boyfriend. He sorry. says her. Yeah. He's got, got a cute girlfriend. boyfriend. Then, maybe, got a maybe cute boyfriend, he says. Yeah, cute so boyfriend. You never know. So, mm, so, yeah, it could be, but I, I, I imagine he wasn't getting much action when he was in the first half. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, think, I think he's just any whores go at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if there's going to be a romantic... We call them thermal exhaust pots in the Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> yeah, any thermal exhaust pot is a goal. <laughs> but if, if there's going to be a romantic relationship with Finn, I wonder if that rules out Ray having a, a romance at some point as well, because they're probably not going to do two romantic stories at the same time. If she's a great Jedi, she but, could. Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, I, th I think it's more likely between her and Finn than anybody else because they've already pre-established yeah. that sort of connection even though at the end of False Awakens it seemed like Ray totally friend-zoned Finn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the other point is, I mean, if you may remember, or I don't know if you have seen it, but, and I could be, I'm like dreaming this or whatever, but I, I distinctly seem to remember Carrie Fisher putting a tweet out, um, a picture of uh, of Finn and Poe together and just simply writing gay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, maybe maybe Kerry knew what was going to happen. Yeah, well, we'll find out. Well, so. she was a script doctor on uh, Last Jedi as well, so maybe she made it happen. <laughs> yeah, there you go, so look out for it. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry will always loom large in the legend. <laughs> Definitely. Well, guys, that's uh, the Chosen Ones section. So if you want to send in suggestions for who you'd like to see us discuss on the next segment of Chosen Ones, you know where to put the comments in at SW Force Talk. And now it's time for Star Wars news. But just before we do that, to let you know, no, Nick hasn't vanished, but he has gone to a concert. So uh, we're going to do the remainder of the show without him. He's got to watch Bruno Mars. So make your own, make your own comments about that. Okay, so uh, 
as we were saying earlier on uh, at the top of the show, Star Wars news obviously a bit thin after uh, Celebration, but uh, via Movie Web just now we have found some breaking news. So, Star Wars 8 opens. No, before we even start saying anything, spoiler alert! Spoiler please. alert! For start, we don't want to spoil things for you if you don't want to know. So this is what's going to be very difficult for me doing this show because I tend to avoid all, yeah. these, all these things. So I really don't want to know too much, but we are going to discuss this. All right. So Star Wars 8 opens with an unexpected face-off between two iconic characters. So now what they're saying here is that um, it was actually from uh, Nerdist.com had reported that Snoke and Leia are going to come face to face in The Last Jedi. General Leia and Supreme Leader Snoke headed for a face-off at the beginning of Star Wars The Last Jedi. General Leia gets captured and brought before Snoke, and they have a shouting match. So, there you go. What do we mm, think about this? This thing sounds really good. Yeah. I was hoping that um, Leia would get a bit more meat. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at the end of the day, she said, well, no, she's not a... Jedi, but she's got the, the Force just like Luke. She's the daughter of Anakin Skywalker, so let's see her use some Force powers. I mean, she's not going to be any match for Snoke, as far mm. as you know, but, I mean, if she gets to... She's not going to use a lightsaber, I doubt, but if she can do some Jedi stuff, that'd be really good. Yeah. So Carrie Fisher doing that. I mean, I wonder about that, whether, it, whether, it's, whether there's a conscious decision by Leia... Uh, to n not follow that path. Mm. Like, she feels that she needs to follow the path of, of what she's always done her life. Yeah. So, what she's done all her life. So, she kind of, not switches it off, but, like, chooses not to expand on the skills, but that's, then yeah. she still yeah. can feel things. Yeah. Because I think she's sort of more, like, a sensing she Jedi. She's attuned to the yeah. Force. Like, she can talk to Luke telepathically. Yeah. So I need to read Bloodline. One thing I've not read. I'm actually reading that in the next couple of weeks. That's probably going to reveal more about her force abilities and her skills. But if she's coming face to face with Snoke, she's not going to go in there defenseless, you wouldn't think, or just for chat. So I'd like to know how she got captured. Yeah. Yeah. Because last we saw her, she was on that base, and it'd be quite hard to get her out of there. Yeah. Mm. Alive. Well, it'd, be, yeah, it'd be good to see her as part of the action, and like you say, just not, not just in a. Uh, control room or whatever. And they're saying that's going to be the opening scene because I thought the opening scene was going to be um, Luke and Ray. Ray with the lightsaber. So unless they mean maybe it happens after that, I don't know. Maybe. So. We'll have to wait and see. No, I guess. Interesting news. Good. So that was pretty cool. Um, moving on to they've uh, via the uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 game, they gave us a look at um, Kylo Ren's uh, new look in the film and also to Ray's new look. Now, Kylo Ren's doesn't seem to have changed a massive great deal, doesn't yeah. it? But there has been a little bit of controversy about this this scar. Yeah, the moving scar. This moving <laughs> scar <laughs> issue. So basically you got the scar at the end of Force Awakens and it's like across here and uh, Rian Johnson made the decision that it was kind of just look, didn't look great on camera mm. so they've kind of moved it over here. So... Which I wish they hadn't done, really. I can understand his artistic reasons for doing it, but, mm. I mean, at the end of Force Awakens, he's got a massive scar down the bridge of his nose, and then yeah. a couple of days later, it's on the other side of his eye. It just yeah. seems a bit... Another another odd. example of classic Star Wars continuity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, now, in terms of Ray, we kind of seen a bit of this on the um, one of the action figure releases, wasn't it? The, the new toy line. Yeah. Um, but we've got a full view of it here. She's got the um, leather armbands and the, the 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 sleeves are kind of like the Jedi wrapping, but it kind of looks a lot a lot sleeker than than like the old school Jedi. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't know whether she's going to mm -hmm. get a robe or not, or whether mm -hmm. it's whether this is part of the whole Bendu I image because it does kind of lend itself a little bit to that yeah, that Japanese great feel. vibe, hasn't it? As well. <laughs> yeah, but it, it does have that much mm -hmm. more of a kind of samurai look to it. Yeah, what do you think? Yes. I think she looks like a mirror image of Qui-Gon in a way, with the hair, especially. Yeah. Um, maybe just a modern look on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've got to make it, move it on a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff it, looks, like. it looks a bit more action-friendly, really, as a robe. You know, it's not the long, 
so bold Obi Wan robes. Yeah, and it, it just looks a bit freer. It's just basically a bit of a tunic and a big belt. So I think they've got a poise for some action, but looking slightly Jedi-ish. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it looks pretty cool. So uh, kind of jumping back to celebration because this is one thing that we didn't really pick up on. I mean, obviously there was loads of news, but I, I know there was kind of a quite a large subset of disappointment uh, with regards to um, a lack of certain things uh, being unveiled. One of the main ones, of course, being that everyone was expecting that we would get uh, the 4K versions of maybe the trilogy. Mm -hmm. But my own personal thing was like, well, it's the 40th anniversary of A New Hope. Obviously, um, well, not obviously, but um, 20th Century Fox still own distribution rights to A New Hope. So it would make sense that they'd want to cash in one more time on it. (laughs) So I thought, well, are we going to get a cinema release of A New Hope in 4K? Or are we going to get, you know, the new 4K DVD or whatever version? And of course, all all the, you know, all the fans are like hoping that we will get the unaltered versions. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody asked um, Kathleen Kennedy directly about this and said, are we going to get the un- unfettered versions or whatever? And she said, that's George's thing and I'm not going to go anywhere near it. Mm. So, I mean, are you disappointed that we're not going to get the uncut versions? I'd love to see it in cinema like my dad did when he was younger. Yeah. It'd be quite an experience. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind, to be honest. I think I'm one of the, one of the few fans that... I don't mind the special editions. I'm not overly bothered if I don't see the original versions again. I've actually got them on VHS at home anyway, and I've still got my old VHS player upstairs, so I might kind of dig them out one day and you can come around. The, the ISD lot, but, executor box set. But there were a lot of things, I think, because I'm from the original trilogy generation, so I did see the original Star Wars look when I was, uh, I don't know, about five or six, so I was lucky enough to see that. But I do remember when the special editions came out, it's not... It's not just the CGI that they added in, they cleaned it up so much and mm. they, they improved the sound and the editing in parts. And I do think people forget if you do see the original versions, great as, the, as they are, because they are the classic ones, obviously, mm. I'm not taking anything away from that, but there was a reason George did a lot of the changes to the films because yeah. they fell short of his vision. Um, so I know everyone wants to see them. It'd be great to be able to, you know, just put the DVD in and watch them. But I don't mind. I think <laughs> I, the, with you. the problem is, I mean, I, I'd like to see them. Yes, I, I'm a bit of a purist like that. I, I don't have too much of a problem with the with the special editions. The, pro, the, the problem is for me is that the special editions they put on Blu-ray, the the colorization of it's the films was was, was awful. Mm-hmm. It wasn't wasn't good at all, and. To the point where we've moved now with the with the special effects, in some ways, even if you compare them to the uh, the prequels a little bit, the 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 elements that have been added do look dated. And and, and I know there has been updates, certainly to Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, to to the Jabba the Hutt scene. They made, the made changes in the Blu-ray releases again, didn't they? Just like the blinking Ewok eyes. Yeah, and... they've done all that. But I feel that if they're going to bring them out in 4K, they need to do. A, a complete overhaul of the added special effects that they put in in '97 and update that so it looks okay. special be- special edition. So it looks better <laughs> than it is. Or they need to. Uh, what I'd like to see would be the option of both. Yeah. So you've got the totally unfettered versions and you've got an mm. updated special edition. I think one of the problems as well that I read was that when they created the special editions, the original masters of the original theatrical release. Mm weren't, I don't know if they're either not altered or they weren't kept. So there's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no actual master that they could use to create a 4K version. Anyway, they could only release it in its original grainy... No, no, because they, they, they had all the original elements, so they recomposited them digitally. Right. So there's no reason why they should not be able to do that again. The other problem is, and why I'm mentioning about this 4K thing in the first place, is that a 4K version, we don't know which version, of a new hope does exist because oh. um, not J.J. Abrams, uh, Gareth Edwards confirmed that he'd been shown a 4K version of right. um, a new hope in the preparation for Rogue One. Yeah. So why we're not going to see it, I don't know. But fingers crossed. Let us know what you think. 
Okay, now back to Star Wars Fan Fun Day, and we're going to dip into some of the uh, interviews that we conducted at the event. So, first of all, check out uh, my chat with Dave Prowse. Okay, welcome to Force Talk. I'm sat here with the legendary Dave Prowse, aka Darth Vader. Now, before we start talking about Star Wars, which of course that's what everyone wants to talk about, um, you started off in bodybuilding. Well, yes, I, I got very interested in bodybuilding right from when I was a, a very, very early teenager, and, uh, and, I, well, and, and then that developed. It, it went from it went from sort of just straightforward bodybuilding. And at a, at a very very sort of low standard, uh, so to, to a higher standard, and then then of course it went from went from there to competitive weightlifting, which is a, which is a, um, you know, which is a, quite a quite a big a major sport, and, yeah. uh, and then of course you know then, then from you know, from from, uh, from being just just sort of competing locally. You, you came entering in, 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 in ch- championships all over the blo- all over the place, European yeah, championship, yeah, world yeah. championships. Yeah. So, so um, and that of course led on to uh, Mr. Universe. Then, well, I was, yeah, I did the. I, I only I got invited to enter the Mr. Universe. Yeah, I mean it was it was very nice to be a. Um, I think I think I, I, I was actually I did the Mr. Universe contest before. I became the British heavyweight weightlifting champion. And that was uh, because, as I said, I, I, I went so far as, as as far as the bodybuilding was concerned. Yeah. And then, then, I, then I, I, I think I got to the stage where, you know, they, they were coming, they were they were coming up to me and saying, well, you know, you've got a great physique, but you've got horrible feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> you've got hammer toes and things like this. I said, well, I can't, I can't train my toes. You know. <laughs> yeah. I can't do, can't do anything of, about that. Can't do these sort of things, you know. So, uh, so I said, oh, not that on the head, you know, not not the not the competitive bodybuilding on the head. Yeah. And 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 uh, go on to competitive weightlifting, and then uh, and they became, as I said, became the British heavyweight weightlifting champion. Yeah. Fantastic. And held all sorts of British records, and yeah. you know, I held the British records on the deadlift, and uh, picked up six hundred and seventy-eight and three quarter pounds. Which was a British record at the time. Uh, oh, and then it suddenly became uh, the, What's uh, called uh, for photo uh, shoots the, the, Brit- the British champion and Empire and Games champion. And yeah. things like this. It was nice. So that, of course, um, you started out in with the Hammer Horror films. Then, in, in terms of the acting, was that the first thing you did? Um, well, it's one one of the it's one, one, it was very the very beginning. I did a, I, I did some uh, some horror films for Hammer. Yeah. Frankenstein's yeah, monster, yeah. And monster from hell. Frankenstein's monster from hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, um, and then of course you did you did work a bit of work training other people. You worked with Christopher Reeve on that's right. on, yeah. on yeah. Superman. And Christopher Reeve on Superman. That's right. yeah. And then um, the legendary um, Stanley Kubrick came knocking on your door, didn't he? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, well, I, I, Stan, Stanley was. Stanley lives up in the fairly close to um, Elstree Studios. Yeah. And I used to go to Elstree Studios when, you know, when I was. If I, if lots of lots of the work I was getting was was within within the Elstree Studios. Yeah. Whether, whether it was whether it was something small or whether it was something major, it was still it was still at Elstree Studios. Yeah. And um, and it, it, was, it was quite quite regular for me to see Stanley Kubrick there. All oh, right. And and. and, and and then, of course, what happened was I got very, very pally with um, Stanley Kubrick's secretary, a very, very nice little lady, like you know. And, she always uh, helps. Yeah, which helps. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and 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 next thing I know, I'm, I'm being invited to Stanley Kubrick's house, like, you know. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So not, not that Stanley was ever there. <laughs> <laughs> so it must have been a great experience working on a um, Clockwork Orange. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I like that. Well, that was a good, good movie. And that's. But they're, they're all the way back. There's, I think, oh, it's a long, long, long time ago. Long time ago. I can't remember much about it, to be honest. In a galaxy yeah. far, far away. Far, far away, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it was from Clockwork Orange that, that George Lucas noticed uh, you. Yeah, that's right. Um, and brought you into to audition for the Star Wars, yeah? Uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And I believe he was looking at you for a different role to Darth Vader initially. Uh, Is that right? I think I think I think didn't he, didn't he show you this big hairy costume first? 
No, no, no. <laughs> and you said? No, that, no, that, was, that, was, that was Peter Mayhew. Peter, yes, yes. Peter Mayhew came in and did that, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. the Wookiee, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, no I, was, I, was, I was never... I was never considered for the Wookiee. Oh right, okay. No, I, no. I, th I thought I'd heard somewhere that they he'd show you that first. Well, he'd show you the two characters. Yeah, yeah. And you said, um, yeah, I'm not really interested in the, in the being yeah, stuck yeah, in a hairy yeah, costume yeah, yeah, for yeah. such a long time. Uh, yeah. I, I'll go with the um, I'll go with the villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and of course, you did that across the you know across the three, three films. That's right. Yeah. What 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 was your favourite? Um, of, of the trilogy to work on. Oh, so what, Star Wars, Empire and Jedi? Yeah. Um, well, I liked all three of them, actually, but probably Empire. I think Empire, Empire Strikes Back was my, my favourite of the three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. And now you get to meet all these great people at, uh, at conventions. Well, Travelling around the world. It's amazing, isn't it? Travel around the world doing it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's be phenomenal. Be before we get out of here, I have to, I have to mention a personal note from me is that I, I probably should have met you years ago but back in the I think it was around 1986 or 87 my dad was singing on um, doing entertainment on the QE2 uh, and you were on the boat yeah and he met you all those years ago and he yeah, came back yeah. home with your autograph for me yeah and the 45 inch vinyls of uh, the Green Cross Code song, yeah. also signed by you. Yeah, yeah. And I've still got those to yeah. this day. Uh, and that, of course, um, you saved a lot of lives doing that job. Oh, look, listen, and, and I think. think. <laughs> He's the Green Cross Code man. He wants you to be safe and you can. If you stop, look, listen, and, and think. think. That's I, what I used to say. I used to say, if you stop, look. Listen and stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got on a yeah. serious note because you, you saved yeah. quite a lot of lives doing that job. I didn't know, you? I know. But I, I used to have fun with that with that last word. Yeah. Yeah, lots of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant, oh, yeah. Dave Prowse. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed. Definitely my pleasure. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Okay, that that was really good fun. That wasn't it. I mean. I really didn't expect at the top of that interview that by the end of it I would be singing the Green Cross Code song with Dave <laughs> Rose, so that was fantastic for me. So next up, we're going to go on to uh, Sarah's interview with Ingvild Daler, the uh, new Princess Leia, basically, in Rogue One. Check this out. So I'll start off, how did you get involved in the industry? Oh, well, it was just uh, a complete uh, like serendipitous event. I wasn't planning on being an actor. Um, I did it for fun when I was a teenager, a bit of theatre, but I never considered it as a career. Um, so I studied philosophy and history and media, and then one day at a pub, um, a friend asked me if I wanted to be in his film. And I said, hmm, that sounds interesting, I'll, I'll just give it a go. And uh, yeah, just thought of doing that one film, but then I realised I really liked it. So one thing sort of led to another, and then I, yeah, after a while I decided to just try it full time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it like standing in front of Carrie Fisher? Uh, a lot of mixed feelings, because... I really admire and respect her, and I love Star Wars. Uh, so it was just a huge honour, but also, like, you can never replace her. So I was really nervous about how people would feel, like, when the film came out, how they would react to see her, like, on screen again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also then, with her sad passing so quickly after, it, it got even messier, and I didn't know what to, like, yeah. It was, it was a bit difficult, but um, it seems like most fans are, are happy with with how like, that it was respectful, that we're sort of continuing and honouring her legacy. And, I definitely yeah, am. That's great. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> and then when I found out later that she'd seen the scene and she was happy about it, that was a huge burden off my shoulders. So, yeah. <laughs> was there any additional dialogue filmed at all? No, no, no? nothing that was filmed. Yeah. Nothing that was filmed, but yeah. it was something recorded? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, not in, no. Uh, nothing where you can tell me? Uh, nothing like, uh, yeah. This is uh, getting into murky waters here, but yeah, no, I can't, that's all I can say. <laughs> Do you still see yourself, you continuing the role? I mean, if they want to, like uh, another standalone film, like with Han Solo, but uh, about Leia, I mean, I'd love to, or just a, more of a, a supporting character, maybe in another standalone film, sure, I'd love to. I mean, 
it would be the scariest thing I would ever do as an actor to try and emulate her further. But I, I couldn't turn it down if they would approach me. <laughs> Have a photo shoot for the trailer, or you would like a photo with the trailer. Thank you so much. Where do you see yourself going on from here? Do you want to carry on with the acting? Yeah, yeah. Um, so far it's going well, and I've been getting the roles that I find interesting. Yeah, so definitely, as long as there are roles out there and the people who want to cast me, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to see you. So as we have, we do, we do, we do, we'll yeah. ask you questions again, just as a bit. Oh, okay. So tell us, comment, comment before we that. We might press the comment button. <laughs> okay. Carla, Blackburn. Okay. Do you see, first of yourself as acting as Leia in another film? Ooh, I mean, yes, if they were to like ask me, I, I couldn't possibly turn it down, but it would be the scariest thing I'd ever do as an actor, I think, because because it's Princess Leia. I mean, you can never, ever replace her, but if they could find a way of making it like, respectful and, and uh, yeah, then I'll, I'll be up for it. <laughs> Any more roles coming up? Yeah, I'm working on... Um, Two future films later this year and next year where I'll play the lead role. One is an apocalyptic drama thriller set in Norway but by a British director and the other one is a, by a Brazilian director but set in the Netherlands. <laughs> so it's a bit all over the place but it should be, should be fun. <laughs> I'll look forward to it then. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed that Sarah, well done. Was that, was, that, was that technically your first interview of somebody? It was. So, well done. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> And that just about wraps it up for Four Stop. Before we get out of here, we just to let you know that, well, we were down to three for the remainder of the show, but uh, next time, which will be in two weeks, and I must make a note here as well, that at the top of our very first episode, I said it's going to be bi-weekly. Don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> it's fortnightly. Michael. I'm away for the next show. Um, I'm away on holiday, so it's not really an unfortunately I'm away, but I will be... Missing it, I'll miss you guys, I'll miss doing this, so I'll see you in four weeks. Indeed, and you'll be sending us many sickening pictures, I'm sure, of you lazing in the sunshine. I'll try. With a cocktail. I'll in try. No, we don't, no want, we don't need the budgie show smugglers. <laughs> you won't be getting those. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, also, if you want to make any suggestions for um, who to cover on Chosen Ones, or even on our canon um, segments... Feel free to drop us a line on Twitter at SWForceTalk or on Facebook in the same way. So until next time, may the force be with you. See ya. See you then. Thank you.